Hello everyone, and welcome to Alice Madness Returns. So, I've been wanting to play this game on my channel for a while, uh, but I kind of had the elephant in the room of um, American McGee's Alice, which is of course the first game in the series, and it somehow felt a little bit wrong for me to be going straight to the second game without at least addressing the first game. Um, so I basically did a whole lot of work trying to get um, a graphically modded American McGee's Alice working on my computer and recordable, and I encountered so many technical difficulties and hiccups, and there's of course the problem of time investment as well. Um, so I may well revisit that game in the future, hopefully I will get around to it at some point, but in the meantime, I remembered that at around about the time that Alice Madness Returns was released in summer 2011, they also released, they being EA, released this Alice Madness Returns uh, visual novel on iOS. And I believe it was free. I got it around the time it came out, so it was so long ago I can't really remember. I think it was just like a free promotional thing. Yes, it was, in fact. Uh, free promotional sort of marketing material for the game, but it basically sums up uh, the story of American McGee's Alice and goes, the story like progresses into the story of Alice Madness Returns. So it seems very appropriate as a sort of intro to this game series for me to be doing this. So we are going to begin a new story. I'm playing this on my iPad, by the way, and uh, recording it through QuickTime, which is a nice feature. Rutledge Private Clinic and Asylum, home for wayward and lost souls, London, England. So you can see there are things on the screen that are like interactive, in this case the door. Um, just having a look at this, if we tap the marble at the top, then we have the option to share to social media. So you can see the kind of marketing ploy of this whole project, but the artwork is really nice. It's, um, it is a nice little add-on to have, especially for free. And if we tap the rabbit we have like a contents chapter. So, um, if it'll allow me to actually do it, I'll go back to where we were, Rutledge Asylum. And we will get on with this and get through it so that we can play the actual game. Okay, we'll go into the asylum when it gives us the opportunity. There we go. So uh, there are things on the screen that we can manipulate. I can use my finger to move these clippers and this clipboard. And we can cut down Alice's hair, as you can see. Name, patient's name, Alice Liddle. Date admitted, 4th of November, 1864. Physician, Dr. H.Q. Wilson. Condition dire. All right, continue. Here we have several clippings of the illustrated London news, which I can move around. I can also use this lantern, this uh, oil lamp to illuminate them. And we can scale these and have a better look. Uh, this is number 45, volume 23 from November 11th, 1863. Cost sixpence. Three expire in domestic conflagration. Reports have reached us that Dean and Mrs. Arthur Liddle and their dear daughter Elizabeth, 18, perished in a raging inferno which consumed their gracious Oxford home during the night. Another daughter, the lucky, nay plucky Alice, survived the blaze while her severe burns are being treated at Littlemore Infirmary. Prospects for her, her recovery are not at all encouraging. No visitors have come, and none are expected. We've learned that measurements for her coffin have been taken and her departed loved ones stored in an ice locker in the likelihood the whole family will be expeditiously interred at the same time. Okay. We'll move that one out of the way. Next is number 45, volume 22, November 15th, 1864. A most reluctant patient. Lovely little Alice Liddell, our favourite orphan, the report of whose charred body last appeared in these pages a year ago, has been moved to Rutledge Asylum. 
her battered and crispy self was judged sufficiently healed for this removal to Rutledge, which is thought best suited to handle her symptoms. Investigation into the cause of the fire continues, as do the rumours regarding Alice's possible involvement. The doctors say she's suffering from severe and pervasive trauma, the clinical way of saying her wits have yet to be tethered. According to our source at Rutledge, her behaviour is volatile and unpredictable and she is obviously a danger to herself and others. We wish Dr HQ Wilson, her treating physician, the best of British luck. He may need a suit of armour. And there we can see burned Alice and her little cuddly bunny rabbit, uh, which is sort of an icon from the first game. And there's her burning house. And finally, number 49, volume 22 or 23, December the 3rd, 1863. Alice accused. So there we can see that she's been accused of setting fire to her house and killing her family. All right, let's move on. Uh, here she is strapped in the bed at the asylum. There is a jar of leeches and she has her bunny here. If we attach the leeches to her arm. In all my years here at Rutledge, I've never seen anything quite like it. No treatment seems to move her. Perhaps the leeches will cause her to stir. Um, so bloodletting is a, was a classic kind of treatment for a lot of um, physical and mental debilitation in the 19th century, particularly for mental conditions. It was thought that poisoned blood could be, if removed, um, would just be like replaced by the body by with clean blood. So um, cutting people out, cutting people and like bleeding their blood out into bowls was a very, very commonly used um, like method right up to the 20th century and it's obviously not very helpful. <laughs> When I hold a flame to her eye, nothing in her vacuous gaze betrays the faintest glimmer of response. I clap a pair of blocks at her ear. Nothing. On some nights, she howled like a banshee. She is far, far gone, this one. She dropped her bunny. And the bunny's falling into Wonderland. So this is the um, basically the events of American McGee's Alice, the first game in the series, being explained for us here. So we don't need to play it yet. Into a dark dream she drops, into a strangely familiar yet utterly wicked wonderland of that miraculous place of Alice's youth, no vestige survives. The once lush land is sick to death, its beguiling fragrance now distinctly suggests a decaying corpse. As she bravely returns to Wonderland, Alice hears those familiar screams and a whisper in the dark, Alice. Three times, in fact, her name is called, and three times she fails to form the words left to die on her unhappy tongue. Mother, she longs to cry. Father, too. Alas, they are gone, consumed by the blaze. But Alice needs to shake this haunting from her mind. Indeed, her complete attention is required for many other, more pressing matters here, now, in this most accursed wonderland, with the ever-resourceful Cheshire Cat to lead the way. So, um, basically it's trying to get hold of the iPad camera here. Uh, it does this thing where if you grin at the Cheshire Cat, uh, he, like, grins back. <laughs> um, I'll actually just see if I can do it. Hold on. Ah, never mind. All it does is just grin at you, if, and if you grin really wide, then it goes like a manic grin. Here's the caterpillar. Those fortunate few who've eluded the Red Queen's pestilence 
So far serve as her guides, still it's up to Alice alone to truly root out Wonderland's affliction. She hasn't had much time for reflection, but Alice is afforded a respite of sorts during an illuminating chat with the erudite caterpillar. Wonderland is severely damaged, he begins, pausing to inhale the volatile mix of rotten leaves and putrefied fruit burbling with his, within his smouldering hookah. You must set things right, having lost what you loved, you nearly wiped us out. You've started to rebuild, your task and your pain are not over, even your fantasies have fragmented into tortured visions of themselves. You are wrecked, racked with guilt because you survived, and you dread the prospect of a life alone. Forget your pain, Alice. Destroy the Queen of Hearts. Wonderland and your entire world can become whole again. Alice puts her learning to the test. In the school for insane children. So this is an area from um, American McGee's Alice. It's an early area called the Fortress of Doors. And within that is uh, a school full of insane children, which is pretty awesome. While overcoming abominations committed to her failure, she gathers the ingredients for a much needed potion. The Illustrated London News, November 15th, 1873. So, this is uh, like a, a clear decade later. Are Alice back from the dead? Your intrepid reporter has finally penetrated the great wall of officially sanctioned silence and extracted the true story of the much abused Alice Liddell and her return to normalcy. Dear reader, your legitimate and well founded curiosity can now be satisfied. Look no further than this agony column. Following years of suspense, failed, and what we are sure to be would be properly characterised in a more civilised society as brutalising treatment, the poor and comely creature has come up for air. Alice has spoken and drawn some most peculiar animals, such as progress. Artistic temperaments, like deranged ones, express themselves in very strange ways indeed. Watch this space for more. So here we can see uh, some drawings that Alice has done. And if we touch them, we can make them animate. So there's the white rabbit. And there's the caterpillar with his pipe. Yep. Uh, here is the mock turtle, of course. Uh, a cow wearing a turtle's shell. And that is the... What is that? Griffin? I can't even remember. Never mind, let's carry on. She's grown some of her hair back, as you can see. And uh, now we need to... We can manipulate this arm here with some medicine on it. And she doesn't want it. Restraint, I'm sure all will agree, is quite necessary here. So what I have to do is, with my other hand hold her head down on the pillow like this and then force her to drink the medicine. I have laboured until dawn preparing a new potion. Drink it. The smallest infusion of prussic acid and strychnine brings about a curious reaction. Both of those are deadly poisons. At least it seems to work well on the rats. Drink. Too much of either ingredient could prove quite lethal, of course. Hmm. How very pleasant. In this fragment of Wonderland's ravaged core, a wretched war rages. Red and white chess pieces have been engaged in endless stalemate. 
Now, however, the war has, like the rest of Wonderland, been overturned by the Red Queen. White has been described by a Red Force embraced... <laughs> sorry, I'll try that again. White has been decimated by a Red Force embraced and bolstered by the Foul Monarch, as the aggressors march to the tattoo of the Queen's drum the opposition courageously resists. To no avail, her tyranny is inescapable. Still, White fights on. Death, they know, is preferable to defeat. Knotted in this bloody endgame, no quarter is asked for, none is given. And Alice is moot, witness to the madness. They have no quarter. They hold no quarter. This is the Vorpal Blade, uh, Alice's signature weapon. And the weapon which is taken from the Lewis Carroll poem, uh, The Jabberwock. Victory for the Red is secured when Alice makes a horrific discovery. The White Queen's detached head. Alice. Can it be that this decapitated majesty calling her name? There it is again. Alice, Alice, Alice. Whispered this time in her mother's sweet voice, growing fainter as the din of conflagration rages around her. When Alice lifts her gaze, she doesn't see flames or smoke or mother. Instead, she is surrounded by endless atrocity. The everlasting war has come to an end. More madness is set to ensue. Here is the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, of course. And if I... Okay, what I can do here uh, is, like, tilt the uh, iPad left and right to change the pouring of the teapot. Like so, so I can pour her a nice cup. And also, we can also burn her arm. Ooh. How very unpleasant. The distinctive whiff of putrefaction taints the musty air. Alice needs to be transcendently clever to survive the macabre mischief that is the hallmark of the Hatter's domain. A dim recollection of tea with her family stirs in a long dormant cupboard of Alice's scarred mind. I preferred cake to scones, she mutters in a hushed voice while surveying the Hatter's mouldy spread. For his part, the Hatter's agitation is palpable. His devotion to the Queen of Hearts complete, when, in a maniacal fit, he strikes down the unfortunate White Rabbit, Alice gives utterance to her grim reality. Everyone I love dies violently. Nothing seems to aggravate the girl. I've tried restraint, handcuffs, leg locks and straight jackets. I've tried solitary confinement. Nothing stirs her. Even the highest setting proves inconsequential. Here I have to move these tentacles out of the way with my finger so I can read this, so bear with me. Alice's travails bring her, accompanied by the familiar cat, to the Red Queen's domain and the source of Wonderland's contagion. All that came before was naught but a torturous teasing preamble to an encounter with the vile fiend whose very breath reeks of corruption. Alice pushes on through the wasteland, grey with soot and ash. She's overcome countless abominations to reach this point, all child's play she fears compared to the tests that lie before her. Within the castle keep, the air of domination becomes even more stifling. When a massive tentacle explodes through a shuttered doorway, Alice cannot prevent the lethal limb from seizing the Cheshire Cat and pulling him in. Queen's kingdom oozes pestilence, 
her court is contemptible, and all her craven subjects are abominably bent on Alice's torture-wracked demise. Nowhere is this as certain as in the hall known as the Heart of Darkness. Alice's next step is all too clear, she must kill the beast that is the evil life force of Wonderland. The Jabberwock That is basically like a steampunk interpretation of the Jabberwock. Looks very accurate to the original um, etchings though. And I can control the Vulcan Blade and attack the beast. And now, after all Alice has endured, she comes face to face with the loathsome hag. I rule Wonderland alone, bellows the Queen. This realm is for grown-ups. Raw, well-ordered, ruthless, careening on the jagged edge of reality. Self-pitying dreamers are not wanted here. They cannot survive here. Your pathetic attempts to reclaim your sanity have failed. Retreat to the sterile safety of your self-delusions, or risk inevitable annihilation. Alice fights bravely, as we have come to expect. In the end, she not only withstands the Queen's vitriol, but also spits it back in her face with the fury of her vorpal blade, and emerges victorious with the fallen Queen's crown clenched tightly in her pretty little blood-drenched fingers. Another issue of the London News here, December 13th, 1874. Alice Liddell released from Rutledge. She simply remarks, it's late, it's time to go. Our Alice has been unchained and the limitations of medical knowledge have been duly exposed. After a decade of treatment in the Rutledge Asylum, her overmatched staff addressing her so-called rantings and psychic condition with full array of therapies, she's still a shell rather than a person. Yes, she has emerged from her intermittent catatonia, but no one knows why. In her bed supine, she stares endlessly at the ceiling, no idea what she's thinking about, or if she thinks at all, poor creature. She appears stable, though it's certain she hallucinates, but her visions seem to frustrate more than frighten her. As further cure seems doubtful, further confinement has been deemed by staff to be a waste of everyone's time. Such are the compassionate voices of our medical science. Last we heard, Alice had taken a job of sorts, at Houndsditch Home and Refuge for Wayward Youth while seeking the medical counsel, counsel of a Dr. Bumby. We wish Alice well, we shan't abandon her story. Alice's fortuitous arrival at my Houndsditch home offers hope to the unfortunate she serves. While together, we battle for desperate condition with my extraordinary treatments. The disturbing visions are back, they're jagged, broken and sore. I sense things, but only partially. Perhaps I should be frightened, I don't know. I don't understand them. Unfounded suspicions, ignorance, vagueness. I can't tell, false from true, real from unreal and I want to I must perhaps I am I must perhaps I am destined to be always on the keen edge of madness one thing remains certain I am unable to avoid the visions I must confront them I must return to wonderland Alice there we go and now it, I think it will probably cap it off with Yes, a video trailer for the game. And now, focus. Where are you? So I guess here we go. I can. Uh, this just gives a little teaser of the series, really. Now, Alice, it's only a dream. It's not a dream. It, it's a memory. Oh, my Wonderland's shattered. <laughs>
There we go. All right. So, yes, it's coming June 17th, 2011. So, uh, that'll do. Um, we can also go to <laughs> Zavi.com to uh, pre-order the game. And here are some other random things. Alright, so I'm going to end this here and next time we will get started on the actual game. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I always appreciate you clicking the like button. That does really help me. And, uh, of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more similar content. And I will see you next time for more Alice Madness Returns. Take care and goodbye.